Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. We give thanks to God that we've been gathered here by the Holy Spirit to hear the good news of God's grace and mercy for each and every one of us. Um, we have two baptisms today, which is exciting, and also between the services, less exciting but important. In the other kingdom of God is our annual meeting for our budget approval and um, also the landscaping grounds um, proposal as well. So stay um, between services, about 9.45 we'll come in here. We'll have you sign in if you're a member for that meeting as well. Um, and we'll do that important left-hand kingdom work of the church as well. We have all sorts of things about to come because we're heading, going to be he heading into Thanksgiving Eve service, which will begin our Holden evening services, um, the four weeks in a row there. So um, November 27th is the first one, and then we'll continue the next three weeks after that. So please put that on your calendar. So Advent and uh, devotionals will be ready as well starting next weekend. And also next Sunday we will have a... a, a a class on Advent and what Advent is, and then we'll bring in the kids at the very end um, of that class as well. We have Adopt a, a Family for Christmas at the Church and Society, and we have Denise will be in the Narthex after church. If anybody wants to hear more about that, it's in your bulletin as well. And wreath-making class is also coming up on Saturday, December 7th. There's a lot of other announcements in here, so take it home with you, look on the website, so you can put those things on our calendar as well. We had Bunko last night here. We also had a youth retreat where we had um, 18 members of the church go on that youth retreat. So we have a lot of fun things happening for all generations here at Creator, which is wonderful um, for us all. Any announcements that I'm missing? Okay, please rise as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, we come before you to confess to you that we have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. We have walked in pride as we have relied on ourselves. We have sunk and gotten lost in despair as we have not trusted you and your promises. Help us to bring forth the fruits of your spirit, the forgiveness, the love, joy, and peace that you have shown to us. Forgive us for our unfaith in you and our wrongdoings, even those stubborn habits that we struggle with. All these things we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
the love of God, our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with, be with you all. And also with you. and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. pray. Dear Lord, continue to rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit. Keep in our minds that you have already declared the final judgment on us in Christ and in his death and resurrection. Keep us from being led astray by all tribulations we see all around us. Keep us steadfast in your word that you are with us and for us always. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for today's readings. The first reading is from Daniel chapter 12. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who, was, who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been seen since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 12. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. 
But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. And after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering of sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus and by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near that a, with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confessions of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. Word of God, word of life. Very good. So today we have several readings talking about how God is working in us and for us. And also, but we also have a different reading, which is a little bit difficult to understand why Jesus speaks this way. But before I tell you about it, I want to ask you a question, as we usually do, and ask you, um, is is our weather always sunshine and rainbows and butterflies and unicorns? Oh, unicorns aren't real? Oh, okay, bummer. I thought they were real. Oh, they're gone. Okay, so uh, sunshine, rainbows, and butterflies? How about that? Do we always have sunshine, like especially today? No, right? It's kind of gloomy. And some of us, very few of us, might actually enjoy it, and a lot of us don't enjoy it at all. And it's just the beginning of the season, so we're like, ah, oh, it's just beginning, and it's already dark, even in the, at the beginning of the morning, right, at the beginning of the day. So I ask you this because um, our life is the same way, right? Is our life always uh, happiness, always joyful? always present no right so there are difficulties in life we have uh, difficulties with our siblings we um, uh, have disagreements and we might sometimes might fight or with our classmates or with our cousins or with our friends right and there are things that are hard uh, like maybe uh, how about waking up in the morning is that hard sometimes yeah, or maybe going to bed at night, right? Or maybe you don't get what you want and you are sad because of that, right? Yeah, sometimes you, you do get it, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you understand why your parents say no. Sometimes you don't understand, right? So that happens, happens to all of us. And 
so what Jesus this morning is going to be a really um, different reading when the disciples are saying, ah, but Jesus, look at our life. It's so great here on earth because Jesus was going to go and suffer and die on the cross for us. And they didn't want that. They didn't want a gloomy day. They didn't want a, a hard day or life if Jesus went away. So they say, look at these beautiful buildings. Uh, look at how beautiful everything is. Don't you think it's nice that we stay here, that we uh, appreciate all that we have? And he says, nope, these buildings are going to be destroyed. Do you think that's, that's something that Jesus would say very often? No, right? He's, he's somebody who, who brings love to us and mercy and grace. But this time he says, everything is going to be not great or everything is going to be bad for all of you. But this is only the beginning of all these things. And he says of the birth pains. When um, there is a, a, a mom who is going to have a baby, when they have the baby, it's painful. But what happens after the, the pain? What happens when the, the mother gives birth to a child? Is there life? Yeah, there is life and there is happiness. And then you forget all about the pain. And then all the attention goes to the baby, right? Who is outside of the, the mom, mom's belly and then everyone is happy. So then that's what happens with us. That Jesus comes to us and says, you are mine, you are mine, you are mine, and I give you new life in myself. Not, no matter what happens in your life, no matter how hard it is, I am there with you and for you, always. And when Jesus promises something, he keeps his promises for us. So even when we're having a hard time, we can pray and say, Jesus, please help me. Have faith and trust in you. All right? So we ask Jesus to continue to be with us this week and always. All right, let's pray. Dear and gracious Lord, we give you thanks for giving us your son, that even though there are difficulties in our lives and we have tough times, we ask you that you continue to give us faith and trust in you, that you are always with us and that your promises are sure and are true for us now and always. And we ask that you continue to be with us this week with our relationships with siblings, with uh, classmates, with friends, with neighbors, and with our own family. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may go back to your seats. And the congregation, please stand for our gospel acclamation. And as Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am he. And they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. But be on your guard, for they will deliver you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. And the gospel must first be proclaimed to all nations. 
And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. And brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated for all for my sake's name for my name's sake but the one who endures to the end will be saved this is the gospel of our lord you may be seated such great news aren't they grace to you and peace from god our father and our lord and savior jesus christ amen well as you just heard, there is not much of a promise or good news from Jesus for his disciples or for us today. It all seems to be only doom and gloom, to say the least. Like, just like with Lazarus and the woman at the temple, Jesus did not seem very interested in rescuing them, saving Lazarus from a sure death or the woman from giving her last two coins, which would also lead her to her own end. No money, then no food, no shelter, no security, and no life. And to our surprise, Jesus does the same thing again today. He is not interested in beautiful stones and wonderful buildings when the disciples try to woo Jesus, trying to persuade him from going to his sure death in Jerusalem, showing him all the wonderful and beautiful stones and buildings as if saying, look, Jesus, is this not worth saving and preserving for ge the generations to come? Are you not worried about leaving a long-lasting legacy for these generations to come? But to their disappointment and our disappointment, Jesus was not and is still not interested in submitting the wonderful stones and temple for consideration as one of the seven wonders of the world or to the UNESCO's World Heritage Center. And as if this was not enough, Jesus replies, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Jesus even skips the part of no maintenance into going directly to destruction. It is one thing to say, well, we're not going to spend one penny on a fresh coat of paint or maybe even power wash the moss. And it is a whole different story to say it will all be destroyed. There is not a lick of interest from Jesus for the preservation of beauty, of the hard work put into that construction, or even in the resources that were used to build such great buildings. Not to mention the many years and hours it took to build from start to finish. It was not a small task. And if that was not enough, Jesus continues with the not such good news. The disciples want to know desperately, tell us, Jesus, when will these things be and what will be the sign when all these things are to be accomplished? Jesus does not even address or dignify their question. Jesus simply says, be aware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and he will lead many astray. Not might lead them astray, but will. And as if you haven't had enough yet, Jesus goes even a step further, saying, And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. And we ask, what do you mean, do not be alarmed? Are you kidding me? 
how can I not be alarmed? Are you not seeing everything that is going on around us in the world? Jesus says, this must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes and famines. These are but the beginning, beginning of the birth uh, pains. So this begs the question, when was the last time you experienced a tremor or an earthquake in your recent uh, history? If you're looking for a sign, then the next time you have an earthquake, we might be getting closer to an end or to the end. So beware. We already have rumors of wars and wars raging around us and nation ri rising against nation and famine. Yes, even famine, even when it does not seem like it, it is as we are already preparing for our Thanksgiving dinner in two weeks. And you might have already a 20 pounder in your freezer just waiting for you to eat more than enough that day. Famine, really? Well, maybe not for right now, but it might come one day, so we worry. And all of these things only seem to add to the anxiety or maybe the relief of our election results. We have already been experiencing the divisions in relationships between neighbors, family, and friends. And we hear this reading, a brother will deliver brother over to death and the father his child and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. But not for his name's sake, not for Jesus' sake, but for something much smaller. You might have even heard the admonition or advice, quote unquote, from some people that you should cut ties with family members and friends who disagree with you. And even before that, that was already happening. And as disturbing as this might be and is, Jesus does not come to put a stop to it. He's not like the father we always expect to come when two uh, siblings are fighting and says, knock it off. But he says, okay, go for it and see where this leads you. And instead, Jesus comes and says, be on your guard. You will be delivered to councils, beaten and stand before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them. You will be, be brought to trial. But don't be anxious. Yeah, right. Easy for you to say, Jesus. But we might have our own ideas of why this is happening and, what, and that we will be targets of all these horrible things. But the reality is that we do not know for, for certain. One, if it will happen directly to us, to you and me, and two, when it will happen. And this is not limited to the election results and its consequences as whatever they might be, though it does include them, but to our very lives, to the difficulties that you face in your daily routi routines. It might be even your health, your job or your retirement security, the life and the future of your church. There is, that's why we're having a meeting in between services, right? Your various relationships, the state of our country and even the world, and last but not least, our relationship with God and our faith. We too, like the disciples, speak to Jesus in the same way. Look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. Are they not worthy of saving and preserving? And we are not only referring to physical buildings, but to what we hold near and dear to our hearts, to whatever it is that we have as our idols, to whatever we place our trust in, family, friends, job, 
savings, retirement accounts, church institutions and buildings, our traditions, our ideas, and especially ourselves and what we do and we, what we might try to accomplish and think that we can accomplish. We want to preserve what is pleasing to us. We do not like change, and we certainly do not like things ending the way we know them. From simple things like a change in the menu of your favorite restaurant to even a church program that if it changes in the least, you will find yourself saying, but we've always done it this way. Why do you mean you are changing them even if it was only done once? And the proverb, it is better the devil you know than the devil you don't, is truer than ever. We are very comfortable with what we know. So you will find yourself trying to warm up to the idea that even when you do not like change, it is a reality you cannot avoid. Even during, during an unrelated conversation this week with our weekly Bible study, uh, this very topic came up, and it was said that it would be much easier if people would come to terms with the reality that change is the only constant in our lives. Change, taxes, and death, that is. That's the reason why we find ourselves time and again saying these words. Tell us, Jesus, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are to be accomplished? If we can't avoid change, then at least it would be great if we knew when it will take place. And if not exactly when, then at least a hint of how. How about at least a tiny little sign, Jesus? Why? Well, because we want to prepare. We like to be in control. We want to be on our guard so that we can be as ready as possible, so that we can have our ducks in a row, so that we can account for our actions and be found guiltless before God, that we did at least try, that we at least prepared that we try to improve and be the best we could for us and for our neighbors. But to our surprise and contrary to popular belief, this is not what Jesus is interested in. Jesus is not interested in a continual so-called reformation or continual improvement on or continual betterment. What Jesus is interested in is a completely new thing, a completely new you, a completely new life. But this new thing is not something you can create or build by doing something of your own. For as much as you try, this is only accomplished by Christ alone without any of your or my works without any of your strength and effort. We might want to bring world peace, but guess what? We can't. Thus the author of Hebrews tells us, and even when every priest stands daily at God's service offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, they can never, cannot take away sins. Not very good news to us whatsoever, right? But, there is a but. And this is when we like when there is a but. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should, made, should be made a footstool for his feet. These are very good news indeed. For by a single offering, he, not you or I, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Not 
those who are sanctifying themselves or making things better, but those who are being sanctified by Christ himself. That is, by Christ's own death and resurrection from the dead, in your baptism, you are sanctified. You are being made anew by his promise alone for you. God not only puts his laws on your hearts and writes them on your minds, but he says, in Christ Jesus, I will remember your sins no more and your lawless deeds no more. Because where there is forgiveness of this, well, there is no longer any need of offering for sin, especially from you. Each and every single one of you have been elected, chosen by Christ himself, cleansed in heart and mind, making you anew every single day that you are so confident in the full assurance of your God-given faith. For he who promised to be with you and for you is faithful to his promise when we cannot be. And he is faithful to you, most importantly. And in this way, even when there are difficulties in our lives, which I am sure there are, whatever they might be, and for as dire and gloomy as they are, and even when they are the beginning of the birth pains, you need to remember that when there is a birth, well, there is certainly pain, but most importantly, there is life, especially from the one who is the creator of heaven and earth, your own creator, who also gives you the faith in him to face life in this old and broken world, trusting that God carries you as his beloved child, you are to him, made by him, chosen by him through Christ Jesus. And now with this good news, the peace of God that passes all understanding and even signs, keep your minds and your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Well, today we have two baptisms um, for Elaine Ryan and Cole Wayne. And for those of you who, um, this is the beauty of the body of Christ and the cloud of witnesses from great grandma to grandma to parents to um, now, now adult children. <laughs> we have the blessing of sharing our faith with one another and when the Holy Spirit will get a hold of us. So today we are remembering that great work through our, the people in our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said, go into the world, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born under the power of sin and death in this baptism of water and God's word we are crucified with Christ so that we shall sh also live with him in the life eternal. Our Lord Jesus Christ has promised that whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Lane and Cole, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and mercy of God, do you desire to be baptized into Christ? If so, say we do. In Christian love, you have been led to this church for holy baptism. You should, therefore, faithfully attend the services of God's house, learn the, the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As you attend church services, you are to read the Holy Scriptures and seek instructions in the Christian faith. Do you promise to fulfill this? If so, say yes with the help of God. Yes, Family and friends and congregation, gathered here today, I ask you, do you promise to nurture Lane and Cole in the Christian faith as you are called by the Holy Spirit and to place the promise of baptism in their ears and help them live in the communion with the church. If so, say, we do with the help of God. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from now and forevermore. Amen. Now this is for everyone to answer these questions, okay? Not just these two. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born, suffered, died, and rose again? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, one holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of body and life everlasting? We give you thanks, O holy and most gracious God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by the gift of the water you sustain all life. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of the living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism are given a new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. Let's come forward, Lane. Lane Ryan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Cole Wayne, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come by. Here, I'm going to put my hand on both your shoulders at once. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new, new birth, cleansing them from sin and raising them to eternal life. Sustain Elaine and Cole with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence now and forevermore. Amen. Lane, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. Cole, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever.
So I love that we give candles and not flashlights. <laughs> because life is messy sometimes, right? And it also gets consumed. But in that, living and as God will use your, in your lives, your life will shine. And God will use you in unexpected ways that you cannot even imagine. And as it burns down, you guess what? I encourage you to burn this every year on this day and remember it. Don't just stick it in a drawer and forget about it. But if it burns down, you can get another one because that's life too. God continues to give you life and will continue to bless you now and forevermore. I also have for each of you a cross to wear and then a, a olive wood cross from the Holy Land and the Lord's Prayer as well to begin to learn those. And I'm giving you fire and paper. This is really... <laughs> okay? And once you go to your seat, you can blow out your candles as well. But congregation, um, I'll, I'll do the blessing for the candle first. Go back one, please, for me. So, see, messiness. We got, we got it. So this is from Scripture why we do this as well. This, all this is based in Scripture. This isn't just us are inventing it. It's God's Word and us fulfilling God's Word that has a promise attached in you, for you. So Jesus spoke and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Pretty good promise, right? So let us welcome um, Cole and Lane. Well, let's clap first. And now, Lane and Cole, in holy baptism, God our Father has made you members of this church through our Lord Jesus Christ and heirs with us of all his treasures, the forgiveness of our sins, life, and his salvation. We receive you into Jesus' name as our brothers in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises for him. That's right. Welcome you, name of the Lord. Amen. Welcome. You may return to your seats. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we place our trust in signs and wisdom, but we despair when we do not get what we desire. Our hearts sink in despair and are troubled at the sound of wars and rumors of war, and we place our trust in the hopes that salvation will come from them, earthly rulers. Help us not to be led astray and anxious, but give us strong hearts minds and faith that we trust only you and your sure promises that you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Merciful Lord, uphold in your hand all public servants, especially the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state and all judges. Graciously enable them to lead according to your will and for our good and for the good of people of this land and beyond. Help this transition of power to take place peacefully. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Holy Lord, the redemption brought to us by Christ gives us confidence that you are near to us. Give us hearts filled with the full assurance of faith in you alone. Hold in your care your servants who are facing difficult and trying times, those who are in prison, those who are sick in body and spirit, those who mourn the loss of a loved one, the lonely and the homebound, Grant them comfort and healing according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Loving Father, we ask you to continue to bless us here in this church with your word of forgiveness and mercy. As we prepare to gather for our congregational meeting, give us a mind and heart that trusts in you alone that you have called us to this congregation to receive your benefits and to help our neighbor. Give us trust that you are at work in this place. And everything we do, let us do it in your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Incline your ear to our prayers, dear Lord, and answer them according to your most gracious and holy will. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Share Christ's peace with one another.
We will now receive our morning offering. Please rise as you are able. And let us pray. God of mercy and grace, we give you thanks for creating us and all that exists. We give you thanks for giving us and still preserve our bodies and souls with all their abilities. Continue to provide for our every need, such as food and clothing, home and family, daily work, and all we need from day to day. Use us in our vocations that we may help our neighbor in their every need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We will be communing here at the altar. You'll be invited forward. If you need gluten-free communion, let me know. The darker liquid is grape juice, is, is wine, and the lighter liquid is grape juice. I'd like the communion assistants to please come forward. These are God's gifts for you, God's people. Come.
And Maureen, I'll come after service and bring you a communion right to you, okay? Okay, let us pray. Um, the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, again in the body and blood of your Son, you have looked on us with grace and mercy. We thank you and ask you that you make us glad in your promises for us and hold fast to you alone. Grant your Holy Spirit to enlighten us with his gifts so that we live out our days in the hope and peace that Christ is with us always. We ask this in the blessed name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.